more and more women are being drawn to daytime television talk shows hosted by other women. But what are the messages of these shows and what effect do they have on those who watch them? We'll talk about that tonight, so please stay with us. Thank you. Thank you and welcome. I'm Father Mitch Packer and welcome to EWTN Live, our chance to bring you guests from all over the world. And tonight we have guests from all over the country. But before we get to them, I want to mention that today is the feast of two Jesuits, uh, martyr, English martyrs. St. Robert Southall, who was born in 1561 and became a Jesuit and was, went back to England, uh, was very well known. You might, if you've read uh, English poetry, you probably read some of his poems because they're well known in collections. He was martyred in 1595. Well, a few years before him was St. Edmund Campion. St. Edmund had been an Anglican and did very well at Oxford University. But he studied himself into the Catholic Church, went to France, became a Jesuit, and eventually begged to be able to come back to England where he was also martyred in 1581 under Queen Elizabeth. Um, both men were canonized in 1970 by Pope uh, Paul VI and are great examples of being faithful, being literary, uh, using the, the great strengths of uh, our, uh, our language in order to get across the faith. And we celebrate that feast today. Also today, I want to give our congratulations to two brand new American cardinals. Archbishop Donald Wuerl of Washington was made a cardinal today, and so was Archbishop Raymond L. Burke, uh, the cardinal prefect of the Apostolic Signatura. Uh, both of them in the ceremony in the Vatican this, this morning were able to be made cardinals, and so it's a great gift for us to, to have these two men as cardinals. One more bit of business before we get to our guests tonight. We have joining with us in the audience EWTN's regional marketing manager for Germany, Mr. Martin uh, Rottweiler, who is here to let us know about a special award that Mother Angelica recently received. Uh, Martin, would you please tell us about this? Yes, well, Father Mitch, yes. It was a great surprise when I received a phone call a couple of months ago that a German foundation uh, was uh, ready and willing to give Mother Angelica the first German award for what she's done for the world, and what she's done especially with, uh, with television. And uh, I think that was a great surprise. It's the first award I think that she's received, and I was asked to receive this award on behalf a few days ago, which I have with me, brought with me, so that it may be conveyed to Mother Angelica here. And um, the award was um, especially you know, for her courage and her perseverance in, in spreading the good word and, and um, building up this, uh, this uh, big uh, network, EWTN. Right. As a matter of fact, I like the word for perseverance in German. Auf Deutsch, it's... Uh, it's hartnäckigkeit. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it means sort of hard-necked. But it's, uh, you know, it's that kind of perseverance that she put the yoke on the shoulder and she got the work done. Exactly. And it's a special foundation that is especially for achievements of women, so that they especially award women for extraordinary achievements and like violinists, so from culture, science, um, so from different areas. And so this was really a very special award, a very surprise. And I think what maybe may have contributed to it that we have um, published also the um, gem biography of Mother Angelica in German. So this was presented last year on the International Book Fair in, in Frankfurt. And uh, we have started to voice over Mother Angelica's um, uh, Mother Angelica Life, um, best of Mother Angelica Life, so the Mother Angelica Life classic shows in German. And um, so they are well received, welcome, and I think Mother Angelica is really welcome in Germany. We're happy to have her there too, and uh, give her a German voice in a sense. So uh, we are very happy and, and very glad about this reward, and I think Mother Angelica is as well. Well, thank you very much for bringing this to us. Appreciate it very much. Vielen Dank. Thank you. <laughs> welcome. All right, a lot of exciting things going on tonight, and 
now we get to have even more excitement as we have our guests. They have plenty to say and they're not afraid to speak their mind. The three of them are co-hosts of a brand new EWTN show called The Catholic View for Women. So please welcome Teresa Tamio, Janet Morana, and Astrid Bennett Gutierrez. Good to see you, Father. Welcome. Thanks for Good to see you, Thank Teresa. You, Father. Janet. Thank you, Father. Welcome. Thank well, welcome. You. Well, the two of you are better known uh, to our audience because you, you, you do a lot of radio, of course, and you're well known on the radio show and you've been on the programs here. And of course, Janet, your work with uh, uh, Priest for Priest Life, for Life right. has been just uh, marvelous, and so people know you well. I don't think people know you as well, Astrid. Where are you from? I'm from East Los Angeles, Father. Great. So I'm a Latina from East Los Angeles. I've been working in the pro-life movement for 10 years. And I have been on EW EWTN, but the Spanish version of it, Defending Life. So I've been on there for the first two seasons, um, helping Father Frank and Janet produce those, those programs. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, that's great to have you all here. Yes, yeah, fun. You. Good We're to be excited. back. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thrilled. Now, tell us just a little bit about what this show is that you're going to be doing. Well, I'll toss it over to Janet because she was the one who came to me, what was it, five years ago we about, talked about this yeah. in a cruise that we did with Catholic yeah, Answers. Yeah, in 2005, yeah. Uh, I joined Teresa and Father Pavone on a Catholic Answers cruise, and uh, that's where we really got to know each other. And I told Teresa, I have this idea, you know, that the secular shows that are out there for women, let's face it, Love You, Ellen, uh, just a whole Oprah, they, they just really are not good things for Catholic women to really watch. And I said, we need to have something where we can talk about Catholic issues and, and, and put a perspective on it that's wholesome and good, but yet talk about concerns that affect women, whether they're leading a single life, married life, whatever their vocation is at the church, but we can talk about the issues of today. And Teresa liked the idea, and so we first did a draft of this to the network all the way back in 2006. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it just goes to show you, Father, sometimes you have to be patient and wait and pray and keep submitting your idea, and sooner or later... So we're going to do uh, six shows. We're going to tape the next two days. Uh, it's going to be a little mini-series, and uh, the shows will begin airing in the spring of 2011. Great. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to having yeah. this uh, series on. We probably won't have a lot to talk about, though, because we're all very quiet. Oh, yeah, quiet we're just very yeah. quiet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 so yeah. Stop yeah. with the irony already. <laughs> That's, we don't need any of that because we know just the opposite I is know. true. As a matter of fact, one of the things uh, is that the three of you each have your own qualifications. Tell us a little bit about your own background. Start off with you, Teresa. Well, I've been in broadcasting and radio and television for almost 30 years, and, and that's not including college and high school. Actually, my first radio program was when I was 14. I worked in high school radio. And I was in the secular media as an anchorwoman and reporter for 20 years and had a reversion to my faith during that time and walked away from a very uh, profitable career because I just felt very strongly that what was happening in the media was not helping society, it was actually hurting it. And so I decided I could either stay in and, you know, constantly beat my head against a brick wall and trying to obtain balance and, and doing better stories, or I could leave the secular media and try to do something about the problems using my experience. And so in 2000, I started my own communications company, and Al Cresta hired me to work in Catholic Radio in 2008, and I've been on Catholic Radio for um, eight years, and the show's been syndicated on EWTN for almost five years now. Right. So, And then I speak, and I write books, and you know you've, you've interviewed me for my book, Noise, and I'm also writing another book that'll be coming out next year from Ignatius Press, and I have a series of girls' books and tween books. and So my whole mission now is to help women, and especially young women, realize that what the church offers us as, as, as women, daughters of the king, is it's the answer to everything. And I don't want women to go through what I went through, you know, falling away from the faith, um, having problems in my marriage where, you know, my career and the hunger for success and buying into whole contraceptive mentality almost cost me not only my marriage, but my soul, as I say when I give my testimony. So if I can help one person or one young woman stay away from that, that's, that's what I do. So that's why I'm so excited to do this program. How about you, Janet? Well, like Teresa in a way, we always kid around about being the bad girls. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> oh, true. It's true. Uh, you know, I too was away from the church, Father. I went away when I was a sophomore in high school, and it took till uh, November of 1989, actually, when Father Pavone came to my parish uh, as a newly ordained priest, and my daughters were basically going to church with my mother-in-law. I wasn't taking them to church. You know, I just was so turned off to the church by that. I hadn't stepped inside a church in, like I said, 20 years. And it was through my mother-in-law's prayers, patience, and uh, my daughter's prodding that got me to go to church. And uh, basically, you know, I was standing near Father's confessional, and my daughter pulled me over and said, 
Mom, come meet Father Pavone. Father, this is my mom who needs to go to confession. <laughs> and well, so, everybody needs kids like that, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but so a journey started that Father was really cool. He didn't push me into the confessional, but he said, well, Janet, you have concerns about your faith. Why don't we come and talk? And he introduced me to coming to his weekly Bible class, coming for spiritual direction. It took me three months. I was not an easy customer because I had major objections. I, you know, I got swept up like Teresa did with the culture, contraceptive mentality, uh, you know, radical feminism. Radical feminism. Mm -hmm. you know, even questioning the infallibility of the Pope. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, you know, but I did. And so it was Father who actually unpacked the teachings of the church for me. I mean, he started with the Mana Vitae and said, let's start reading this and, and understand it. And once I was, you know, and I went to, you know, the sin of it, Father, is I went to Catholic grammar school, high school, and college, okay? So I guess maybe there was some poor catechesis there, but I had no idea these documents even existed. And I think my testimony is, and why I, I am so passionate about doing the Catholic Review for Women is, I don't. I want to prevent more people from going down the road I went down. Mm -hmm. You know that I just left my faith for so many years. I've been back now for 20 years. I adore the church now. Uh, I regret all those lost years, and so I feel like a little, like a little mouse in one of those wheels. I have to keep running a race now to make up to the Lord all the time I lost that I threw away, yeah. because the, the church is so precious, and women are raised in such dignity in the church, in the documents, in the teaching, in the, I mean, in the scriptures, in the scriptures. scriptures yeah. You know, and that's what we want to bring out on these shows. We want to. Take the tough th subjects of today. We're going to talk about contraception. We're going to talk about, you know, body uh, extreme makeover and all these difficult issues. Body you know, image. Body image that women struggle with. Yeah. But then we're going to un unpack the beauty of the church, the jewels they have for women, and, 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 and help us to uh, really know them, you know, discover okay. them. And then we go to the baby of the group. The yeah, one here. Astrid. Baby, hardly. <laughs> Astrid, what, tell us about yourself. Well, like Teresa and Janet, I was also a cradle Catholic, and I think going through school, going through parochial school, I don't think I really learned my faith very well. It wasn't until I was about 23 in college at UCLA, actually, that I met a group from Opus Dei that taught me my faith. And it was then that I realized um, what the Eucharist was, you know, what the church was, that it was the true church. And um, so many wonderful things. And during that time, I also realized 4,000 children were being aborted every day. I had no idea. I was pro-life, but I had no idea the magnitude of the culture of death. So um, I became involved with the pro-life movement. But at that time, when I was realizing what the church was, I really wanted to just give my life to God, like completely. I wanted to become a nun. I mean, I wanted to be a missionary. and. As I was discerning, I realized what I really wanted to do was be part of the solution to the abortion holocaust. And I also met Father Pavone in 2001, and it was in that meeting uh, that year that I realized I want to do this full time. I want to give my life to the pro-life movement. And also I wanted to be a part of the voice for the unborn within my community, the Hispanic community. I realized that our people really are kept in the dark about abortion, contraception, um, my contemporaries, the Hispanic Americans that are first generation Americans as well, the poor catechesis sometimes, um, the pulpits, you know, we're not hearing about contraception, about purity, modesty, all these wonderful things that are so liberating. Um, in the Hispanic community, Father, what's, ha what's, what's, what's held up as the Holy Grail is a college education. That's what parents tend to want for their children, a college education, but they don't realize that sometimes when, when we go to college, we sometimes um, trade in our faith for secular ideas that are just, they're just, they're just, you know, they're, they're meaningless, garbage, you know, right. um, false feminism, uh, the culture of death. So when I realized what the truth was, I wanted to be a voice for that. I wanted to be a voice for my generation that, in fact, are survivors. I was born in 73 when abortion was legalized. So I realized that was meaningful as well. God had a mission for me, and, and it's been such an amazing adventure. So in this program, I really hope that we can reach the Generation X, you know, my generation, the uh, 20 somethings and 30 somethings, so that they can al also realize how beautiful the church is, the Eucharist, Our Lady, and they can also be a, a response to all the social ills of the world. So this is okay. a really uh, amazing project, and so we're grateful that, you know, we're, we're uh, bringing this to the network. You know, one of the other things about the three of you is that you all are involved in various ways in the media beyond EWTN. Mm -hmm. uh, I recently saw you on Fox News. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. I do a lot of interviews. On, I'm considered a media expert because of my background, and that's the, my area that I love to talk about and help people with primarily, and that's what I write about. I write a column for our Sunday Visitor every two weeks called Ion Culture. 
and I was able to um, do a lot actually with Fox News over the last few years during the interregnum uh, when we were waiting to hear who our next pope would be. They brought me on several times. I was on with Bill O'Reilly. And then just recently I was in the Archdiocese of Newark speaking for the Archbishop and Steve Ducey from uh, Fox and Friends was there and he was on my website. He was the MC, and he said, you know, you, you've done a lot of stuff with us. We've got to get you back on. Would you be interested? And I said, sure. And well, lo and behold, a week later, I get an email from one of the producers and wanted me to come on and talk about cyberbullying. So that's, there was an interview about cyberbullying and what's happening with young people and how this is getting s worse and worse on the Internet. And so they brought me on as an expert to counter a civil rights attorney who didn't see any that this was just kids, you know, acting things out. And my whole point of it was, no, it's a whole different ballgame when you're on the Internet. So a lot of times I'm called by the secular media, not only in TV but in secular radio stations, to comment on those issues. And as for you, young lady, uh, <laughs> I, I see here that you've got from the Washington Times a nice big article about, uh, you know, being pro-life. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, Father, that's not the first time I wrote an article and, and sent it in to a secular paper, and I want everyone to understand that. You have to be consistent. You know, don't give up. Um, and actually, before this one, I had one printed in the Anchorage uh, Gazette up in Anchorage, Alaska, about Sarah Palin and why the attacks on her. And, but then this one, actually they were tweeting about I had an abortion. The, the pro-aborts uh, started this whole tweet going on and encouraging women to tell about how great it was having their abortion. Well, I woke up that morning and, and saw this on, on the news wires, and I said, this is ridiculous. And, of course, I'm from Brooklyn, so, you know, you got to react. And so I wrote this article along with, and I got the women from the Silent No More Awareness campaign. I said, okay, ladies, let's go. Let's tweet, tweet. And we got to really turn the discussion around on the Internet on this by so many of the Silent No More women tweeting back about, yes, I had an abortion and I regret it, and going into all the sad things about their abortion. Uh, and so I wrote this article. I, I uh, got commentary from Dr. Alvita King which is part of Priest for Life, uh, Dr. Teresa Burke, who commented from a psychological point of view what was going on, and, uh, and of course, Georgia Forney, who co-founded Selling and More with me. So when I put it all together and submitted it, and I, I was, like, shocked that the Washington Times printed it. I was, like, delighted, you know. But it just goes to show you that, you know, we can get into the secular media. We have to just keep trying. Don't give up. You know, I, I would say that to anyone who's listening. If you have a good idea and you're going to write a good article, submit it. You never know what can happen. Sure. And that has to do with letters to the editor, too. Yeah. And you're also involved in the media, right, Astrid? Yes, Father. I should mention that I belong to two organizations. Uh, the first, I direct Los Angeles Pregnancy Services, LAPS. It's a pregnancy center that's um, in an inner-city neighborhood of Los Angeles. It's the same neighborhood where I was born and raised. So um, that neighborhood has nine, nine abortion clinics. So it's a really critical area. So I'm, I'm working there. I've been there for 10 years. And then I also uh, work with Hispanics for Life. So in these two capacities, I've been able to speak with with the media, not only the religious media, and I speak to, um, I've been on EWTN, of course, and uh, I've also been on evangelical networks speaking about life right. issues. And but you've I've, been on CNN Español. Yes, recently, talking about the issue with the whole confusion with uh, the Pope's comments um, to the media about condoms. I, I was there to clarify and also offer some interesting information about all the, that the church is doing uh, for the AIDS epidemic, which was really enlightening. I thought God can bring something good out of uh, something that can be exactly. a, a, yeah. a disaster. Right. See, this is the thing. Why should the, you know, the, the radical feminists and the pro-abort women out there, why should they be able to dominate the airwaves? Right. We're educated women. We're on the front lines. You know, we've all been involved in the pro-life movement. I've been in the media now for almost 30 years. There's no reason why we should limit ourselves, not that we're limiting but I'm saying only be in the, in the Catholic media. And that's why if I get called upon, if it's an appropriate topic, if I feel qualified to talk about it, um, you know, I'm not a theologian, I'm a media expert, we should be out there and we should be giving the Catholic view and the Catholic perspective. We have to engage the culture and do it well, do it professionally. And those of us who can do it should be out there doing it on a regular basis. And that's part of the reason mm -hmm. why we thought this show would be beneficial because it would bring women a, a Catholic perspective of things, which is not out there. I mean, when people get the, the information about the Catholic Church and the secular media, heaven forbid we should look at just what, what happened with, with the Holy Father and, and this beautiful book, Light of the World, the whole thing got twisted. They're, they're not getting the full story. If I say that a gazillion times on my show, I mean, I'll say it another gazillion times, do not get your information about church teaching from the secular press, unless it's someone who, as you know, is, is an Orthodox Catholic saying this on the airwaves. Or, or somebody very responsible. I mean, exactly. Yeah. I, the, the, the press nearly universally 
got the whole thing wrong yeah. about that the Pope's comment on condoms, except for the Wall Street Journal. Right, right. right. And we were mm -hmm. talking today in, 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 in our meeting, how can you even think, this just shows the illiteracy of the press in general, do you obviously think if there were ever going to be a change on a church, a, a major church teaching like this, which there wouldn't be, first of all, because it, it can't be changed, but secondly, would it come like this in the form of a statement in a book? I don't think so. Don't you think the magisterium might be involved? They, they don't even understand the basic of, basic operations no, of the church no, at no. all. They, they don't, apparently they don't know how to read. Well, exactly. And so if they yeah. don't know how to read exactly. what the Pope actually <laughs> said, how do we expect well, them to understand? Part of it is they don't want to read it correctly either. I mean, right. there's a whole agenda right. there. But, right. but the thing is, is that, you know, too many people still get their information. Even the Catholics, and what's the percentage of Catholics going to Mass? What, 24 percent? Or what's well like under 30 percent? But even if those who are going to Mass on a regular basis, where are they getting their information? in between, in between the Sundays. They're getting it prim uh, primarily from the secular press. Unfortunately, not all of the Catholics are watching us, listening to theologians like you or Father Frank or whomever. Mm -hmm. They're getting their information from the CNNs and the MSNBCs of the world about the church. And, and there's, that's where they're formulating their opinions on things, which is not what the catechism tells us about a well-formed conscience. But that's why we need to be out there and to do shows like this and to let people know about it. And now, it, we, have, now we have Facebook, Father. We have Twitter. We have so many vehicles to, get out to there. preach yeah, the exactly. gospel. And so now with this show, we can promote it. We can have yeah. our sisters and friends uh, yeah. watch it that maybe are just questioning maybe contraception. And they'll watch the show and get the truth about it and and hear wonderful uh, people speak like we have clips on Janet Smith and right. Dr. Lanfranchi clarifying uh, just the dangers and evils of these of these uh, uh, contraception and so mm -hmm. but we're not passionate at all about this I no mean. not <laughs> really <laughs> Stop with the cynicism. You well, East Coast people, you know, Father, come on. We had um, uh, just recently, the girls were up at the New York, and we did some what they call B-roll, you know, shots of us for them to use for the open and things. And the most striking thing that happened to us was we were uh, driving with our videographer, Kurt, Kurt Schumé, and we stopped. I mean, Staten Island has a boardwalk, like half the island is beach. And, but we just said, oh, let's pull over here. And as we got out of the car, Father, went up onto the boardwalk, turned to our right, guess it was in the sand. What? A crucifix. It made out of sand. Like this. Oh, the crucifix made out of sand. sand. Yes. Right. Somebody carved it into the sand. Yeah. And here it was, you know, in November. It was actually Veterans Day. And it, I mean, it was giant size, Father. It wasn't even small. It was life size in the sand with the, cri the corpus on the, on, the, on the cross. And we, we started weeping. We got all emotional. We were like, oh, my goodness, this is a sign. And we all said, yes, this is a sign. It's not about the us. The first thing we saw it's when we got out and walked saw. on the boardwalk. Yeah. Now, what are the chances, seriously, right. of a crucifix versus, you know, you, sometimes you see the face of the Lord or the praying, praying hands, hands or, Bible. or the Bible. But normally in the summer, this was November. This was November. And it was and a cold there was, morning. There was nobody else on the beach. Nobody there was, was there. We were, I'm saying, okay, the cynical reporter me is like, okay, <laughs> there's got to be a sculptor Where's around here somewhere. Around? Where's yeah. the guy? Yeah. No, that was it. No. This giant crucifix in the sand. It and amazing. it was the first thing we shot. We just you stood know, there, started, and then Startled. there he yeah, was. It was, it was just beautiful. It was like, hello, it remember, it's about me. It's not yeah, about you, girls. Yeah, it's about yeah. me. Keep your eyes on the Lord, and that's what this yep. is about. This show. It's all about him. Mm -hmm. yep. That's yeah. very cool. Isn't that neat? It was. Yeah. It was a sign for us, you know? And so we're going to, you know, use these uh, kind of signs, I think. Like, for example, um, you know, people are saying, well, what is going to be your, your, like, image for the, for the show? And, of course, it's the Blessed Mother as, as our model. And uh, we got the kind of fun, Mary, because we were debating, well, it can't be, you know, Our Lady Fatimer or Our Lady Guadalupe. You know, it's not a pro-life show, so we can't have just certain ones. And we found here at, at the EWTN Religious Catalog the Madonna of the Kitchen. And so that is going to be like a fun little thing we're going to have on our show and talk about uh, the Madonna of the Kitchen. And actually, I mean, and just so that folks can understand, the, the, this Madonna of the Kitchen has a broom, a uh, spoon in her hand, a, a, a serving right. ladle, and a big pot of something that and she's it, cooked and up. And it's spaghetti sauce, or <laughs> gravy, as we say gravy. on the East Coast. It's gravy, Father. It can't be spaghetti sauce. <laughs> Why? Because they didn't have tomatoes in those days. <laughs> in the Middle East, they didn't have tomatoes in those no. days? No. How did they eat tabbouleh? They ate it without, oh, okay. because the, the tomatoes came from the New World. Okay, but Father, it has a lot of symbolism. Like, details, 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 Padre. But if you look at the, the Madonna, she has keys in her hand. Now that's to symbolize to keep the home safe, but also more importantly, that she's there, hopefully, to lead us to open the keys to the gate to heaven for us by and, following okay. Mary. And the pot has to do with uh, food for nourishing not only your body but for your soul. And the the broom, Father, it's you know it's for you know house cleaning, but it also symbolizes um, 
purity of your thoughts and deeds. So we pray for her intercession for all those yeah. things. And I have to tell you a funny story, Father. I, I have this Madonna. I have it now for a couple of months, and I have it on my kitchen table. And so when everyone comes, you know, I have some family members who maybe are, don't always go to church and all that stuff. And I'm so, shocked. You too. Yes, no me too, way. too. My goodness, <laughs> universal. And so the Madonna's sitting on the table, and they say nothing about it. But suddenly I noticed, like, like that the last big meal we had at Thanksgiving, my son-in-law said, normally I have to make them drop the forks, can we please say grace? But he went, oh, oh, let's say grace. I was like, shock, shock. And he said it. I was like, thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. Praise and then God. I noticed the conversation at the table has been cleaner and nicer. And it's not that I'm going, oh, look, the man out of the kitchen here watching you guys. But it's just her presence on right. the table has, like, changed things. So we decided to make her uh, kind of like a our model for our shows. Yeah, yeah perfect. perfect. For women, well, down of the kitchen. One of the other things that strikes me as a man is that she's got these keys, she's got a soup ladle, she's got a broom, she's got a pot. This is classic feminine multitasking. Amen. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Amen. Exactly. She rocks. It's great. Yep. Yep. She does. I think it makes a great gift for Christmas, too, Father. I mean, Christmas is coming, and yep. I know you can order it here at the Religious Catalog, Madonna the Kitchen. <laughs> and and just like our Blessed Mother, she always is color-coordinated. She That's even right. matches our set. We brought it to the set today. She's yes. the <laughs> same color. Well. Yeah. Very well accented. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's Our Lady. She always thinks of everything. I know. She does. Uh, That's something that doesn't the color even enter my my. Your my radar. Purview. It's not right. even on your it's radar. No, you know, no, Father, no. if you notice, we told you before the show, we had to make sure we didn't clash on the set. These kind right. of things are important. I <laughs> guess so. I guess so. <laughs> Black's a good look for you, by the way. Thanks. Like that's I a good know, look I know. It's, it's the one way to keep my clothing coordinated. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, is, it sounds like an exciting show, but, you know, there there is a lot of competition. I mean, the, 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 there are these other programs. Right that are on the air that are very popular uh and they give away cars and trips and all sorts of things and uh what what do you what's the attraction to these programs and how are you going to reach that well i think the attraction is that that women are hungry for companionship for fellowship and for mm -hmm. friendship and they want to be able to relate to other women and because there isn't anything else out there they're drawn to these particular shows and a lot of them are like we were they're searching, you know, that old country song, looking for love in all the wrong places, and they're thinking that it's going to come to them in a relationship mm -hmm. or, you know, through their, quote, quote, sexuality or through materialism. And so if we can get to them and let them know about this, that been there, done that, bought the T-shirt, as we said, doesn't bring you happiness, maybe no. temporal happiness, but it's very quick, it's and in, in the end, it's, it's pretty yeah. empty. So, But I think they're looking for it because mm -hmm. they're, they're all searching. You know, what did St. Augustine say? My heart does not rest until it rests in thee, O Lord. And so they're constantly searching, mm -hmm. and these things seem like the appropriate answer at the moment, these programs. We also do have another example, Father. It's kind of like we're trying to also reach people who don't know about EWTN. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you an example again. The day we were shooting B-roll, we were walked in. It's a it. shock, but we were shopping at the time. <laughs> but always, always <laughs> shopping. Shopping. Shopping, shopping little and items teaching. For and gifts so for Jill we, and we, Kathy. For yes, and we walked into the store, a dress shop, and there were a lot of women in the shop. And, of course, we were picking up purses, and Kurt, our videographer, was with us, and he was nonchalantly just what, filming a little of us shopping. And some of these ladies said, what are, you, what are you doing? And we said, oh, well, we're doing some shots for a new Catholic show we're going to do. What's it called? We go, The Catholic View for Women. They go, oh, you mean something to go against? That, that that garbage, the view? And we say, yeah, yeah. And they said, gee, that's great, but what's the Catholic channel? What's EWTM? We, so we explained mm -hmm. it. And they go, oh, we probably have that on our cable network. We said, yes. And they go, when's it going to come out? So we gave them the whole story, Father. And they said, could you please make sure to tell us when it comes out? So I'll go back to the dress shop, make sure they know. But the point is, <laughs> you know, with a good promotion here, there are people who are, like Teresa said, they're searching and they're curious. And I think this show can be a vehicle to introduce people to the wealth of shows that are here on the network. And people like who were like we were, bad girls, fell away from the church. It's a great way of helping them to re-enter and get to, like, learn your faith again, you know? So, so this is going to be a theme of bad girls gone good. Exactly. <laughs> and once, <laughs> Father, and once they're good, we want them to be apostles of the truth. Amen. That's right. To That's teach right. these uh, wonderful Hey, that could be a t-shirt. A t-shirt. Bad girls gone way. good. Yes. It's a promo. Cindy, it's wonderful. Uh, we'll, we'll talk. We'll do Negotiate, uh, okay. copyrights, it's, okay, later. Gotcha. copyrights later. Yeah. I got to take a break, but uh, we'll be back in about two minutes, and we want to get your comments and your questions. So please stay with us.
Thank you. Thank you very much, and welcome back. Uh, we have a nice studio audience from different parts of the country, and we'd love to have you come and join us if you get a chance. If you can make it down here to EWTN to be part of our live audience, uh, as well as join us for the masses and get a tour of the studios, uh, we more than welcome you to be here. Uh, our phone number for the pilgrimage department is 205 271 2966. That's 205 271 2966. Or you can go to our website for information, www.ewtn.com, and they'll help you with all kinds of information about where you can stay, the scheduling for the masses and programs and tickets and all the rest. And by the way, all the tickets here for the shows are free. It's a good price. So come on down and join us. It makes it a lot more fun. You ready for some questions? Sure. Uh, I bet you are. <laughs> Let's start off with this gentleman here. First of all, sir, where are you from? I'm from Omaha, Nebraska. Great. Good to have you here. And what's your question? Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to commend the ladies for coming back to the church because uh, knowing the difficulties that can cause from uh, other individuals I've had in contact with, I'm, uh, I'm a deacon in the archdiocese there. Uh, I'd like to know what your relationship was with, in coordination with the Eucharist before and what it is now. Mm. All right. Wow. Well, the Eucharist actually is, is what uh, kept me Catholic. And I, when I made my f first Holy Communion, for whatever reason, I didn't have a head knowledge, but I had a heart knowledge, and I knew that that was the Lord. And, I, and uh, you know, when I started studying my way back into the faith, my husband came back about a year before I did, and really I, I uh, commend the Holy Spirit and my husband's faith in me and not giving up on me for, for what I'm doing now. I mean, he's really the, the wind beneath my wings. My husband, who's watching tonight, by the way, Dominic, I wanted to say hi, honey. I love you. Um, but I think for me, the Eucharist, it, when I came back and, and I was approached by uh, many different friends in different churches, and, you know, and, and they didn't try to pull me out of the Catholic Church, but they talked to me about their faith, which was beautiful and lovely. But deep down, I knew that, well, you know, the Wendy's commercial, where's the beef? And I knew what I knew what I knew that everybody couldn't be right. All these other churches outside, they may be beautiful and have a commitment to the Lord, but somebody has, has to have the, the, the truth, all the truth. And of course, the Eucharist, to me, I just couldn't imagine life without the Eucharist. And so it kept me, it kept me Catholic, the Eucharist. Okay. Yeah. For me, it was, uh, you know, again, I had been raised Catholic, but then when I went away from the church, you know, you, what happens is, Father, you stop going to confession, then the next thing you know, you start skipping Mass, and the next thing you know, you're not doing it at all. Well, when I came back, those three months of study I did with Father Pavone, I'll never forget after the three months and I was ready to go to confession. It was a Saturday night. Our, our parish always had, besides the daytime confessions during the day, in the evening after the vigil mass. And it was all decided that I was, I'm going to make my confession then. And Father, I said to Father, when I was finished, I, was, I felt like just this warm feeling. It was so wonderful. And I said, well, tomorrow I get to go to communion at mass. I was so excited. And Father says, well, no, you can go now. And I says, well, what do you mean? Mass is over. He says, no, Janet, go up and kneel by the tabernacle. And the church was like the lights were down low and everything, Father. And I knelt by the tabernacle, and Father got the keys and gave me communion. And, Father, it was like I, I felt like my first communion day oh, again. Nice. Nice. And I felt like. I was really having a relationship with Jesus for the first time in my life. I was, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, was, it was such a warm feeling, and it's like time stood still. And at that moment, I said, oh, my God, Lord, that I walked away from you for so many years. I am so sorry. And it's like I got to know Jesus. You know what I mean? And, that, and I understood now as an adult that that's what this is about. It's not just this habitual thing we do, going to Mass on Sunday and just receiving, like, you know, like, like you're just doing some kind of habitual thing. No, it's the relationship with Jesus Christ, and that we get, He gets to come to us. And so it, it was, to me, that was, I, I feel like, my first communion, okay. you know, because it was with all my heart and soul, you know. Astrid? Um, until I was 23, Father, did I really know what the real presence was. For 23 years, I thought that it was just symbolic, sadly. Um, but it was at UCLA um, through Opus Dei that I realized that that is Jesus. It is Jesus. And I remember clearly hearing Tim Staples, a uh, Catholic convert, speak and and say to us, he said, you cradle Catholics, you have to talk about the Eucharistic miracles. And when mm -hmm. I heard about um, the miracle of Lanciano, Lanciano my yeah. goodness, mm -hmm. it was such an amazing thing. And now uh, the Eucharist is, it's everything for me, absolutely everything. And I'm very blessed to belong to a wonderful parish, St. Peter Chanel in Hawaiian Gardens, where they teach us uh, devotion to the Eucharist and to Our Lady. And so I feel like we're equipped 
with everything we need to confront the culture, to win souls for Christ, because we have the nourishment of the Eucharist, which is everything, and more than anything, the love, I think, from God through the Eucharist. You know, I think the, the other thing that we have in common, too, is that when we all, when three of us came back to the church, and I know for me, I, I, you know, reading some of these documents, like Mulieris Signatonum, or the Papal Letter to Women, or Evangelium Vitae, Humana Vitae, you kind of feel like, you know, ooh, I could have had a V8. Where was I all these years? Why didn't I know about this? Half right. of me was so yes. excited and thrilled and, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And have you ever read this? The other half of me was really angry yeah. that I hadn't been exposed to this. Yeah. Part of it, of course, I blame myself mainly, but the other part is there's abysmal catechesis going on for the past 40, 50 years. And this mm -hmm. is when women discover this stuff, I've never met someone who's read any of these right. documents who hasn't mm -hmm. said, oh my gosh, this is so incredibly beautiful. Where have I been all these years? And that's the excitement we want to give to these women. Read this stuff. Right. Read it. Embrace it. Ponder it. Pray over it. This is, incre this is an incredible gift we have in the faith. Yeah, yeah. All right, we have another studio question. Ma'am, where are you from? Um, I'm originally from Colombia, but I have been in the States, in New Jersey, for the last... Um, <laughs> for the last 40 years, and I love it, I love it. I'm very, very happy and proud of you that uh, we are going to have this opportunity. I have been Catholic all my life, but in the last 20 years, I became a real Catholic. And Good for you. But thank you. Uh, my question is, um, uh, what about, um, will this program be something different or similar as the program we have with a, uh, Women of Grace? Yeah, with Janet Bankovic. With Janet, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Janet yeah. Is, is amazing. She's and she wonderful. has been so kind to me, and I've emceed many of her conferences. Um, I think it's going to be very similar, but a little bit different at the same time, because what Jeanette does is unique in the fact that, that she has uh, Father Sylvia on the set with her, and they do the interviews in studio. We are really going to sit around, and it's going to be us talking about things as three women and, and going to, let's say, a pre recorded interview and then commenting. Actually, very similar format to what you see in some of the talk shows now. We're going to be sitting at a desk, and we're going to be, as we say in the biz, dishing about issues. So it's going to be a little bit different in terms of the format. But the whole idea, which Jeanette does so beautifully, is to get women to understand who they are in Christ and that they yeah. are daughters of the King. And so, um, my gosh, if we could be, you know, come close to what Jeanette does, that would be a dream because she's so amazing. But really, the, the more programs we have out there, I think, the better, another way that That's we can right. learn. Hopefully, this will enhance... Um, what Jeanette does, and I know she's a big supporter of ours as well. Yeah. All right. Uh, we have a caller on the line named Connie. Hello, Connie. Hello. Hi. Where are you from? I'm from California. Great. And what's your question? Well, I was wondering what it is we can do, well, to help people understand those people that say, well, I wouldn't never do it, but I can't tell the people what to do. Oh, so somebody says, I would never have an abortion, but I can't tell somebody else what to do. Wow. How do you address that question? Well, then how do you, how do you apply it? And, and, and I used to have that attitude. I was pro-choice, which is such an oxymoron. The whole thing just drives me crazy now when I think about it. But I try to, to, to be patient and think about people and where that mindset comes from. And really, it's a lack of understanding. And, and they don't think. They don't connect the dots. But what I always say is, well, would you say that about anything else? Would you say, well, you know, I would never shoot anybody, but I can't tell someone else not to shoot someone. Or I would never inject myself with, you know, heroin, but I can't tell somebody else what to do with their own body. The minute we wake up in the morning, our, the laws in our society and a civilized society are telling us what we can and cannot do with our body. We can only drink so much before we get behind the wheel. There are certain drugs we can't ingest. There are certain things we can't do to other people. So this whole thing about I can't tell someone to do what to do with their body, it's just ridiculous. You know, follow the steps and think it out and connect the dots. That's what I tell people. And then also, too, you know, Father, as we, you know, with the Voices for the Silent No More Awareness campaign, I tell people all the time, instead of worrying about the rhetoric and the abortion battle, listen to the voices of experience. It trumps the rhetoric. And I challenge people who think we, we need to ha keep abortion out there because women need abortion. Listen to the voices. Go up to our, our website, silentnomorewayness.org. Read some of these testimonies and see that this abortion didn't solve their problem. It created countless other problems. Mm -hmm. And I think that's another way to also address and, it. And 64%, at least, and there's several surveys that show well over 60% of the women who have abortions say it was no choice at all. They were forced into it either right. by a husband, a relative, and it was something that was coercive. A boyfriend. A boyfriend. Right, boyfriend. This is not something mm -hmm. that they waltzed into, the abortion right. mill, God love them. Most of the women who are having these are in a desperate situation and they don't realize that there are 
other opportunities. So education again. And this program, hopefully, Father, will counter a lot of these slogans that we learn at the university, you know, by people, people like Margaret Sanger, Margaret Mead, you know, these feminists that really just injected poison into our minds. So hopefully this show will help uh, women that are watching uh, to understand how to explain some of these uh, teachings to others in a way that's effective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so you're not going to be taking a relativistic point of view. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Hardly. <laughs> you know, one one of the other things that uh, I I hear about a little bit because I don't watch much daytime television show, mm -hmm. um, but I hear now and again that well on Oprah they were talking about religion, especially sort of new agey kind of religion, and uh, these other shows, uh, are, you know. On, on The View, uh, Joy Behar very commonly puts down the Catholic Church and puts down Christianity. And they talk about religion. How are you going to be dealing with some of these issues? Well, I think we're going to talk about it in, in a positive sense and, and right. in different segments. We're going to really get into the scriptures and how Jesus uplifted women. And the thing that really Again, if you get people to stop and think, you know, you always hear from the radical feminists, well, the church oppresses women and Jesus, you know, oppressed women. And if he wasn't oppressed with women, he would have had, you know, women as priests. And Jesus was acting uh, only in, because it, well, that was the norm of the time, as if God is ever constrained by time, which is so ridiculous. But if the church was trying to oppress women and, and that was their objective, then why, as John Paul II points out, Amelia Signatatum and the papal letter to women, why were women with Jesus at so many significant times in his life, Starting especially Mary the, Magdalene with well, the resurrection. resurrection. Hello, you know. Yeah. I mean, if he, uh, the whole he thing. He didn't appear to Peter first. He yeah. appeared to the, the women. women. I always tell the women that who get all antsy about the church. I said, listen, Jesus could appear to anyone he wanted when he rose from the dead. He chose the women first. So, just go. And you know, and I Samaritan also Samaritan women, women of Bethany. Right. I mean, on, on, and on, on and on and on. Yeah. So. So. We're going to talk about that stuff, uh, trust me. Right. And this yeah. is actually the whole idea. It's the way we're That's talking right. now. We, we want people to have that excitement about the faith and be able to discuss it openly. And you can be a woman in the world, but not of the world. You can shop and everything in moderation, and you can dress well, and you can, if you choose, wear makeup. You don't have to, but you can. You can get your nails done. You can you know, be, make yourself, you know, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, right. and do these things in moderation, in according with the teachings of the church. The church has so many beautiful teachings on modesty and the way to dress and what's appropriate, but you can still make yourself look presentable and look nice and, and just enjoy being a woman, who we are to embrace our identity, not trying to be a man. And that's right. true liberation, and that's yeah, true exactly. happiness. I and mean, we found it. And we're going to talk about vocations for women. You know, it's not just, oh, uh, either the married life or become a nun. I mean, there, there are other things. There are plenty of women out there who are choosing the single life as a vocation. I mean, Astrid right now is a good example. I mean, but there's people like uh, Dr. Janet Smith, who, who's uh, been serving the church out there teaching as a single woman. And we want to raise mm -hmm. that up as this is just as good. It's not where society puts you down like, oh, you're not married or you didn't do this. You, no, there's there's value for women to, to make a commitment to the single life. And, and we, are an answer, we are an yeah. answer to yeah. um, the world's problems. I mean, really, the, the, the abortion issue, it has to do with us really upholding our fem true femininity, purity, modesty. It's us fighting for those things that are really, uh, they belong to us. We have to recapture them. Yeah. Yeah. But we're not excited at all about this. No, Father, <laughs> not at all. Oh, and by the way, Father, we have a website, okay, thecatholicviewforwomen.com. And people can go up there and they can and give that's us. All, that's all one word. Yes. The, the Catholic Catholic view view for women. Women. Com. Dot com. Exactly. And they can go up there and they can register up there and give us a comment or question for the shows. Uh, also, too, uh, eventually we're going to be sending out like a monthly email. We're going to start I'm more on Facebook. We want them, those are out there on Facebook to like us. It's a fan page. And uh, we're going to get the discussion going. We're going to start like a weekly question. Based How do on they find you on uh, uh, Facebook? The Catholic View for, uh, it's Facebook slash The Catholic View for Women. We have okay. our own fan page. Yeah. Okay. You've already liked us, Father. On See? Facebook. Thank you, Father. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not real good at getting into Facebook, you know. But, but. I know you're out there and on it, so we thank yeah. you for And we for see the excitement, Father, from Facebook, all the yeah. comments. Women really are excited to see this alternative to what they see in the secular, you know, world. They want to see this show. They want to uh, hear about these topics that are so controversial. They want to know how to... How to uh, you learn how to teach them, you know, in the world, you know, yeah. because and how to answer all, questions like Connie politics. from California. How do we do that? How do yes. we answer those questions? Right, you know? because that one of the things that uh, I I don't find is 
that there's much thought on what I've what I've seen the little bit I've seen of some of these programs. It's not that there's a lot of thought. No, right. Uh, it's a lot of rhetoric. And everybody right. reacts. They they react. They don't think. Right. They're, they're they're not proactive. They're reactive. And and unfortunately, you know, that's how people before they go to the polls, they watch something on the news, heaven help us, or they read something, God forbid, in the New York Times, and then they waltz into the polls and think they have a well formed <laughs> conscience. It's not right. what the, that's not what the catechism <laughs> says. We're supposed right. to do that through the Holy Spirit. And guess what? The authoritative teachings of the church. Not suggestive teachings or, you know, it's not the Ten Suggestions, it's the Ten Commandments. I mean, this is, the church is there to guide us, but there is, you know, there is the natural law that we have to follow. You know, St. Paul tells us the natural law is written on our hearts, and instinctively I think we know, but we need the church to point us in the right direction. Then we're going to give them the resources. And, and the one thing we're going to close with on the end of the shows is Janet was a right. former teacher. She's mm -hmm. got a master's in education, so she's going to give the ladies a homework assignment. Homework assignment. What kind of homework assignments are you going to give? <laughs> well, you know, uh, things like... I will not talk in class. I yes, always got that no. one. <laughs> no, but see, when we say the church... And I'm not surprised. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> well, when we're talking about the church's document, if we're going to have a specific show, like we'll use the contraception one, for example, well, we're not going to just talk about a few quotes on the show about Amana Vitae. As a homework assignment, we're going to give them a part of Amana Vitae to go to, to study, and give them some discussion questions that they can then you know, grapple and wrestle with and answer and discover the, that document. So this is not just about a bunch of fluff of, oh yeah, Amana Vitae. No, we want you to read the document and really understand the, the, the depth of that document and the truth that's in it. And that's just one homework assignment right there. And believe me, Father, there'll be many more. Trust me. <laughs> Astrid, are you going to be doing this homework? I, I've done it, and I loved it, Father. I mean, some of this Humana Vitae, Janet Smith's um, seminal talk. Why not? Oh, my phenomenal. goodness. When I first heard yep. that, Father, mm -hmm. I heard that maybe a hundred times. I mean, I was playing it over and over. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. So what we're going to uh, propose uh, to the women are things that, that changed our lives and that we want them to have because they're truly gifts from our church. And, you know, to get women to understand that, okay, if, if the world says that the Catholic Church has got it backwards, yet why is everything that the Catholic Church has for women, positive things come out of it, and when what the world gives us, you know, uh, sexual promiscuity, <laughs> contraception, abortion, why is there so much misery attached to it? Okay, it's sold as freedom when it's actually bondage, and yet what the Church gives us is freedom and it's sold as bondage. So to get them to understand, and what I do when I do my media talks is I, I quote secular studies all day long because truth is truth. And truth is revealed in all kinds of ways. You don't necessarily have to go. We will. But you don't necessarily have to go to a church document. You can also go to what is bearing itself out in the world because right. God designed it. He's our father. He knows best, and his plan works. I oftentimes Amen. say that my father and my mother told me not to play with matches, not because they were meanies, right. but because they knew that it was a stupid exactly. thing to do. Right. Yeah. And so, so it made, to make sure that I didn't burn myself or the house down, you know, mm -hmm. they told me not to play with dangerous things. Right. That's what the church is doing, telling us not to play with dangerous things because we'll burn ourselves down. But we right. have to give, give them the resources because they're not getting it from the secular media, and we need to, to do more programs like yours, like ours, like Jeanette's, like, like, like Father Frank's, all the programs that we do on Catholic Radio. The more we can get out there engaging the culture with programs like this, I think we're going to help a lot of people. And we've already had great response. Mm -hmm. uh, we've talked about it on my radio program, and Astrid and, and Janet are going to be on with me again on Friday morning on the program, so I'll be talking about it more. So we just we thank you, Father, for, for allowing us to come on and talk about this because we are so passionate about our faith, and we want to help other women. Don't do what we did. If we can help right. one woman to stay away from contraception or anything like that. And I'm going to give you a bit of advice, too. Okay. okay. One of the things that I would say is don't make it too much of a theme about telling people not to do what you did because that's too negative. You know, no, we're going to right. concentrate on the positive stuff. But in the beginning, we're going to give our testimonies because right. people good. are asking us for that. Because right. Right. they on think the people want to hear your journey. Yeah. But the rest of it's going to be, this is so great. You've mm -hmm. got to read this. That's, that's, mm -hmm. that's one that's of the things yeah. that's going to be key because, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, the three of you have so many positive things going on in your lives. And it's very clear to me that you have these very positive, oh, yeah. strong, powerful things happening that you are accomplishing and this is going to be one of the other things to, to, for ladies to hear is that they, too, have a lot of great things going on. But 
they might need more direction. Right. And I'm so glad you said that because the one thing we were talking about tonight in, in coming here is saying that we, we have so much fun together, the three of us, and, and I have never been happier in my life or more fulfilled. And I had, you know, big TV jobs and made a lot of money in the secular media. And I just feel so much more fulfilled. I feel that there's much more of a purpose to my life. When, you know, St. Catherine of Siena said, when you are whom you are called to be, you will set the world ablaze. And, and you know, the thing is about, it's fun to be Catholic. And we have right. to say that. We had a oh, great yeah. priest, Father Scott Courtney, who was with us in a pilgrimage we did earlier this year. He made us always say, it's fun to be Catholic. I love being Catholic. And we do. We love it. And that's what we're trying to convey, you know, that right. it's... I know we need more enthusiasm. We're working on that, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, Father, we, we want to ask people for prayers because, you yes. know, this is actually, it is an apostolate um, that we're taking on, and it's really spiritual warfare, and we have already had a few attacks, oh, yeah. pretty yes. serious things that have happened to us. So, But we know that everything is in God's hands, if it's His will, that this program continue, and we trust Him. But we really hope uh, people listening at home that like what we're doing, uh, that they'll remember us in prayer. Uh, it's very important that we stay rooted in prayer yes when is this show going to debut we're told um you know after the editing probably the march march or, or 20, april yeah march, we're hoping for april, march yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. march. well what happened is uh from what we understand each show one show a month and it'll have several time slots during that month as like a special so it's uh it is a mini series six shows to start uh, just to kind of see the reaction of people on the network. We have to hear from you, the viewers, you know, what do you think? And, uh, God and what do you willing, want to talk about? And what, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. and God willing, there'll be more shows after this, hopefully. Uh, but uh, It really is, is, we have to commend EW10 because, you know, it is a big responsibility taking on a new series, as you know. Uh, and it's a lot of yes. work to build the set and, and to allow right. us to come together. And, and so I just want to say thanks to Doug yeah. and Peter and, and Michael and, and all the We're just the so gang. honored. Yeah, that, you yeah know. they just were so, so supportive of us and mm -hmm. really said, let's try to get this done. Let's try to do this. Well, it's, uh, I think it's going to be a, a great kind of thing because um, I also agree that this type of show is, is obviously very popular. You know, the, there are a variety of these programs right. in this type of format of, of ladies getting together to talk and and shared you know hard things and deep things uh pr profound elements of your lives mm -hmm. uh so this is something that's out there but you know it's also going to be something to have this catholic perspective yeah. that, that sounds really very mm -hmm. good always and, and you know father i can look at my life and sometimes as i went through life and a lot of I've had a, like a lot of major things happen to me in my life, you know, as I, when I was away from church and when I came back. I mean, things like, you know, I, I had my, my brother-in-law, you know, committed suicide, and that was only like three weeks after my, my daughter. He would stood up as godfather to my, my oldest daughter. I, I, I lost my brother to AIDS. Uh, my other, one of my daughters, when she was 16, was in a critical car accident, nearly died. She fractured a C2 vertebrae. I mean, I've, I've had some pretty, I mean, I've held, sure. held the hands of uh, my father-in-law as he, as he passed away and other relatives. I've been at their bedside watching them die. And sometimes, you know, I said, to, I would say to myself, why is God letting all these bad things always happen to me? And, and I think it was a lesson in life to say that this will give you insight, you know, now. Like now looking back, I say, I really understand what it means to walk in those shoes, to have those experiences. Right. And now that I have my faith with those experiences, I think it gives me a new perspective or a different pair of glasses to put on and understand more. And, and I find when I'm out speaking and people come up and, and share with me, I can really relate. I can understand what they're talking about or right. their pain because I've experienced so many of these different events in my life. And, and I think that was the reason. I mean, at the time, did I understand it? Absolutely not. Did I know? Absolutely not. Did you but, like it? No. No, of, no, course, of course not. not. But there's some good that comes out in the end. And I think God has always holding us in his, the palm of his hand, as they say. And sometimes we don't know why bad things well, happen to good happens. people, but life right, happens. Right. You know, and like coming down to tape the show, Teresa's husband, Dominic, you know, he, he had surgery today. Uh, he, he broke his wrist, you know. Mm -hmm. I got a call right before dinner that my, my daughter, who, who had, who's a diabetic, was rushed to the hospital with, with an infection, you know. And, and so these bad things c continue to happen. And, of course, she is going to be okay. I got another call. She's okay. But the point is, you know, it teaches us how to deal with how life deal with, with faith. With right. faith. Exactly. Right, right. You know? exactly. As opposed to dwelling on it and exactly. the negative and not yes. learning from exactly. it. Exactly. So. Well, uh, surprise, surprise, but we've run, run out of time. <laughs> oh, Father, we didn't have anything to say. I know Sorry. it. I know it. You guys. Thank you so Thank much. You, it's so Thank good you. to have you. Yeah. Good yeah. to God have you back. You. And hopefully Appreciate I look forward to you guys coming back. Pray and for us. Do more of this. Pray we'll for do. us. Yes. We'll Thank do. you. We'll and, of course, do. like us on Facebook, the Catholic for Women. CatholicViewForWomen.com okay. is the website.
All right. Well, let me give a blessing. May Almighty God bless you and keep you and cause His face to shine upon you. May He lead you in all of your ways by His peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 And remember, we can do this kind of program, not only to have them as guests, but now the idea of them having their own series that's going to be a brand new enterprise for us. We can do that because this network is brought to you by you. You make it possible for us to do these new programs as well as do the, this, the regular programs. And we ask you to keep us in between your gas bill, your electric bill, and your cable bill, and we'll be able to pay all of our bills. God bless you and thank you very much.